The Khalifah in the Basket This story was told by the famous singer Ishak of Mosul who said One night when I had left after fasting late with the Khalifah al-Mamun I was suffering so greatly from a long continence of urine that I made my way down the first unlighted side street and going near the wall but not too near as I did not wish to receive a jet of my own water in my face, squared down politely and pissed my fill. It was a great relief. I had hardly finished and was shaking myself when I felt something fall on my head in the darkness. Springing up in a fright, I took hold of the thing and discovered, by feeling it, that, is, that it was a large basket, fastened at the corner with four cords which led up to the house under which I stood. Carrying my investigations further, I found that it was lined with silk and contained two delightfully scented cushions. Now I had drunk a little more than usual and my uplift fancy suggested that I should sit down in the basket and rest. No sooner had I given rein to this inclination then I felt myself rapidly pulled up to the terrace above, where I was met by four young silent girls who led me into the house and invited me to follow them. One of them walked in, the, in front of me, torch in hand, and the three others came behind. While I passed down a marble stair and entered a hall, so magnificent that it could only be compared with that in the Holy Fast Palace. They must mistake me for someone else, I said to myself. Allah will unwind the adventure as he thinks fit. A fast silk curtain, which hid one part of the hall, now rose and a sultan ravishing woman walking towards me, tripping and swaying exquisitely carrying torch and gold censers, in which the base of nard and aloes burned sweetly. Among them was a girl, most like the moon, who could have tortured all the stars with jealousy. As she walked, she balanced on her little feet and looked tenderly sideways, so that the grossest and heavy soul would have flown upwards at the sight. I leapt to my feet and bowed towards her, while she looked at me smiling and said, Welcome, O stranger. Then she sat down and continued in a delightful voice, Rest yourself, my lord. I sang onto a cushion, quiet sobered from the wine, but already drunken with a fiercer drink. How was it, my lord, that you came into our street and sat in the basket? said the girl. I and I answered, O oh, mistress, it was the anguish of my urine which led me into the street, the wine which led me into the basket, your generosity which led me into this hall, your charms which led away the wine and led me into stronger intoxication. The girl was visibly pleased with my reply and asked me what my threat might be. Feeling that I will could hardly tell her that I was the Khalifa singer and musician, I answered, I am a waver from the waves, market in Baghdad. Your manners are exquisite and you are a credit to the waver's market. She exclaimed, if you added a knowledge of poetry, we shall never regret having received you among us. Do you know anything of hers? A little, I said, but when she began me to repeat some stanzas, I answered, Oh, my mistress, I guess it is always somewhat put out of countenance by his reception. I beg you to encourage me by saying some of your favorite poems first, willingly. She answered, and straightway began to recite well-chosen passages from the older poets, such as Imru al-Qais, Zuhair, Antar, 
Nabigah, Amir ibnu Kulthum, and Tarafah, and from the modern such as Abu Nuwas, Al Ratashi, and Abu Musab. I was marveling at the purity of her diction when she said to me, I hope that your shyness has now passed, as Allah lives, it has, I answered, and in my turn choose out all the most delicate of the first and new ad recited them with considerable feeling. When I had finished, she said to me, By Allah, I did not know that there were such cultivated people in the wafers market. At this point, Sharazat saw the approach of morning and distractly fe- fell silent. The Discourse of the Old Woman O King, you have heard from my five charges edifying discourse concerning the despite of mundane things. I will speak to you about certain acts of the greatest in times past. The Imam al-Shafi'i divided the night into three parts, the first for study, the second for sleep, and the third for prayer. Towards the end of his life, he walked all night and kept none of it for sleep. The same, Imam al-Shafi'i said, During ten years of my life, I have never eaten as much barely bread as I wanted. To eat too much hurts everything. It thickens the brain, hardens the heart, destroys the intellect, brings on sleep and laziness, and suck away all energy. Young Ibn Fu'ad tells the following story. One day in Baghdad, I saw the bank of the river that performed my ablutions. While I was stooping down, a man followed by a silent crowd passed behind me and said, Be diligent in your ablution, young man, and Allah will be diligent about you. I turned and, seeing a man with a great bird whose face was stamped with benediction, hastened to finish my ablution and to follow him. When he saw me, he turned and said, Do you wish to ask me anything? Venerable Father, I answered, Teach me, I pray, how one may take certain hold on Allah. This was his answer. Learn to know yourself. When you know yourself, do anything and everything you wish, so that it does not interfere with other people. With that, he continued his road, and I turned to one of his followers, asking whom he might be. He is the Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i. The man answered, 